This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This version was read by Roman Bittner. Struvel Peter Merry Tales and Funny Pictures by Heinrich Hoffmann. When the children have been good, that is, be it understood, good at meal times, good at play, good all night and good all day, they shall have the pretty things Merry Christmas always brings. Naughty, romping girls and boys, tear their clothes and make a noise, spoil their pinafores and frocks, and deserve no Christmas box. Such as these shall never look at this pretty picture book. Shock-headed Peter Just look at him, there he stands, with his nasty hair and hands. See, his nails are never cut, they are grimed as black as soot, and the sloven, I declare, never once has combed his hair. Anything to me is sweeter than to see shock-headed Peter. Cruel Frederick here is cruel Frederick, see? A horrid, wicked boy was he. He caught the flies, poor little things, and then tore off the tiny wings. He killed the birds, and broke the chairs, and threw the kitten down the stairs. And, oh, far worse than all beside, he whipped his Mary till she cried. The trough was full, and faithful Trey came out to drink one sultry day. He wagged his tail and wet his lip, when cruel Fred snatched up a whip, and whipped poor Trey till he was sore, and kicked and whipped him more and more, at this good Trey grew very red, and growled and bit him till he bled. Then you should only have been by to see how Fred did scream and cry. So Frederick had to go to bed. His leg was very sore and red. The doctor came and shook his head, and made a very great to-do, and gave him nasty physic too. But good dog Trey is happy now. He has no time to say bow-wow. He seats himself in Frederick's chair, and laughs to see the nice things there. The soup he swallows, sup by sup, and eats the pies and puddings up. THE DREADFUL STORY OF HARRIET AND THE MATCHES It almost makes me cry to tell what foolish Harriet befell. Mama and nurse went out one day and left her all alone at play. Now, on the table close at hand, a box of matches chanced to stand, and kind Mama and nurse had told her that if she touched them they would scold her. But Harriet said, Oh, what a pity! For when they burn, it is so pretty, they crackle so and spit and flame. Mama too often does the same. The pussy cats heard this, and they began to hiss, and stretched their claws and raised their paws. Meow, they said. Meow, meow. You'll burn to death if you do so. But Harriet would not take advice. She lit a match. It was so nice. It crackled so, it burned so clear, exactly like the picture here. She jumped for joy and ran about, and was too pleased to put it out. The pussycats saw this and said, Oh, naughty, naughty miss, and stretched their claws and raised their paws. Tis very, very wrong, you know. Meow, 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 meow. You will be burned if you do so. And see, Oh, what dreadful thing! The fire has caught her apron string. Her apron burns, her arms, her hair. She burns all over everywhere. Then how the pussycats did moo! What else, poor pussies, could they do? They screamed for help, twas all in vain. So then they said, We'll scream again. Make haste, make haste, meow, meow. She'll burn to death, we told her so. So she was burnt, with all her clothes, and arms, and hands, and eyes, and nose, till she had nothing more to lose except her little scarlet shoes, and nothing else but these was found 
among her ashes on the ground. And when the good cats sat beside, the smoking ashes, how they cried, Meow, 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 what will Mama Nursey do? Their tears ran down their cheeks so fast, they made a little pawn at last. The Story of the Inky Boys As he had often done before, the woolly-headed blackamoor, one nice fine summer's day went out to see the shops and walk about. And as he found it hot, poor fella, he took with him his green umbrella. Then Edward, little noisy wag, ran out and laughed and waved his flag. And William came in jacket trim and brought his wooden hoop with him. And Arthur, too, snatched up his toys and joined the other naughty boys. So one and all set up a roar and laughed and hooted more and more and kept on singing only think oh blackie you're as black as ink now tall agrippa lived close by so tall he almost touched the sky he had a mighty inkstand too in which a great goose feather grew he called out in an angry tone boys leave the blackamoor alone for if he tries with all his might he cannot change from black to white. But, ah, they did not mind a bit what great Agrippa said of it, but went on laughing as before and hooting at the blackamoor. Then great Agrippa foams with rage. Look at him on this very page. He seizes Arthur, seizes Ned, takes William by his little head. And they may scream and kick and call, into the ink he dips them all, into the inkstand one, two, three, till they are black as black can be. Turn over now, and you shall see. See, there they are, and there they run. The blackamoor enjoys the fun. They have been made as black as crows, quite black all over, eyes and nose, and legs and arms and heads and toes, and trousers pinafores and toys, the silly little inky boys, because they set up such a roar and teased the harmless blackamoor. The story of the man that went out shooting. This is the man that shoots the hares, this is the coat he always wears. With game bag, powder horn and gun, he's going out to have some fun. He finds it hard, without a pair, of spectacles to shoot the hare. The hare sits, snug in leaves and grass, and laughs to see the green man pass. Now, as the sun grew very hot, and he a heavy gun had got, he lay down underneath a tree, and went to sleep, as you may see. And while he slept like any top, the little hare came, hop, 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 took gun and spectacles, and then on her hind legs went off again. The green man wakes and sees her place, the spectacles upon her face, and now she's trying all she can to shoot the sleepy green coat man. He cries and screams and runs away, the hare runs after him all day, and hears him call out everywhere, Help! Fire! Help! The hare! The hare! At last he stumbled at the well, head over ears, and in he fell. The hare stopped short, took aim and hark. Bang! went the gun. She missed her mock. The poor man's wife was drinking up her coffee in her coffee cup. The gun shot cup and saucer through. Oh dear! cried she. What shall I do? There lived close by the cottage there, the hare's own child, the little hare. And while she stood upon her toes, the coffee fell and burned her nose. Oh dear! she cried with spoon in hand. Such fun I do not understand. The Story of Little Sucker Thumb One day Mama said, Conrad, dear, I must go out and leave you here. But mind you, Conrad, what I say, don't suck your thumb while I'm away. The great tall tailor always comes to little boys who suck their thumbs, and ere they dream what he's about. He takes his great sharp scissors out, and cuts their thumbs clean off, and then, you know, they never grow again. 
Mama had scarcely turned her back. The thumb was in. Alack, alack. The door flew open. In he ran. The great, long, red-legged scissor man. Oh, children, see, the tailor's come, and caught out little sucker thumb. Snip, snap, snip, the scissors go, and Conrad cries out, Oh, oh, oh! Snip, snap, snip, they go so fast that both his thumbs are off at last. Mama comes home, there Conrad stands, and looks quite sad and shows his hands. Ah, said Mama, I knew he'd come. To naughty little suck a thumb. The story of Augustus, who would not have any soup. Augustus was a chubby lad, fat, ruddy cheeks. Augustus had, and everybody saw with joy the plump and hearty, healthy boy. He ate and drank as he was told, and never let his soup get cold. But one day, one cold winter's day, he screamed out. Take the soup away! Oh, take the nasty soup away! I won't have any soup today. Next day, now look, the picture shows how lank and lean Augustus grows. Yet, though he feels so weak and ill, the naughty fella cries out still, "Not any soup for me, I say! Oh, take the nasty soup away! I won't have any soup today." The third day comes. Oh, what a sin! To make himself so pale and thin. Yet, when the soup is put on table, he screams as loud as he is able. Not any soup for me, I say! Oh, take the nasty soup away! I won't have any soup today. Look at him. Now the fourth day's come. He scarcely weighs a sugar plum. He's like a little bit of thread. And on the fifth day, he was dead. The story of Fidgety Philip. Let me see if Philip can be a little gentleman. Let me see if he is able to sit still for once at table. Thus, Papa bade Phil behave, and Mamma looked very grave. But Fidgety Phil, he won't sit still. He wriggles and giggles, and then I declare, swings backwards and forwards and tilts up his chair, just like any rockin' horse. Philip, I'm getting cross. See the naughty, restless child growing still more rude and wild, till his chair falls over quite. Philip screams with all his might, catches at the cloth, but then, that makes matters worse again. Down upon the ground they fall, glasses, plates, knives, forks, and all. How Mamma did fret and frown when she saw them tumbling down, and Papa made such a face. Philip is in sad disgrace. Where is Philip? Where is he? Fairly covered up, you see. Cloth and all are lying on him. He's pulled down all upon him. What a terrible to do! Dishes, glasses, snapped in two. Here a knife and there a fork. Philip, this is cruel work. Table all so bare and ah, poor Papa and poor Mamma, look quite cross and wonder how they shall have their dinner now. The story of Johnny Hedenair. As he trudged along to school, it was always Johnny's rule to be looking at the sky and the clouds that floated by. But what just before him lay in his way, Johnny never thought about. So that every one cried out, "Look at little Johnny there, little Johnny, head in air!" Running just in Johnny's way came a little dog one day. Johnny's eyes were still astray up on high in the sky, and he never heard them cry, "Johnny, mind the dog is nigh!" Bump, dump, down they fell with such a thump, dog and Johnny in a lump. Once, with head as high as ever, Johnny walked beside the river. Johnny watched the swallows trying, which was cleverest at flying. Oh, what fun! Johnny watched the bright round sun going in and coming out. 
this was all he thought about. So he strode on only think, to the river's very brink, where the bank was high and steep, and the water very deep. And the fishes in a row stared to see him coming so. One step more, oh, sad to tell, headlong in poor Johnny fell, and the fishes in dismay wagged their tails and swam away. There lay Johnny on his face, with his nice red riding case, but as they were passing by, two strong men had heard him cry, and with sticks these two strong men hooked poor Johnny out again. Oh, you should have seen him shiver when they pulled him from the river. He was in a sorry plight, dripping wet and such fright, wet all over everywhere, claws and arms and face and hair. Johnny never will forget what it is to be so wet. And the fishes, one, two, three, are come back again, you see. Up they came the moment after, to enjoy the fun and laughter. Each popped out his little head, and to tease poor Johnny said, Silly little Johnny, look, you have lost your writing book. The Story of Flying Robert When the rain comes tumbling down, in the country or the town, all good little girls and boys stay at home and mind their toys. Robert thought, No, when it pours, it is better out of doors. Rain it did, and in a minute... Bob was in it. Here you see him, silly fella, underneath his red umbrella. What a wind! Oh, how it whistles through the trees and flowers and thistles. It has caught his red umbrella. Now look at him, silly fella. Up he flies to the skies. No one heard his screams and cries. Through the clouds the rude wind bore him, and his hat flew on before him. Soon they got to such a height, they were nearly out of sight, and the hat went up so high that it nearly touched the sky. No one ever yet could tell where they stopped or where they fell. Only this one thing is plain, Bob was never seen again. End of Struggle Peter Merry Tales and Funny Pictures by Henrik Hoffmann. Read by Roman Büttner. This recording is in the public domain.